So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll get into the study today. Father, we thank You for who You are. And Lord, we know that, that You are mighty in mercy, and You are mighty in grace, and You are mighty in power. And Lord, as we look at Your Word today and Your servant Elijah, Lord, humble us. Lord, change us. Lord, help us to trust You completely and submit to You. Lord, help us to look forward to the adventure of following You. Lord, we love You and we praise You in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, the authors C.S. Lewis and J.R. Tolkien are two authors that found a lot of inspiration from, their, from the Bible and from their faith journey. And uh, if you look at some of the great writings um, in our nation or in our world, those two guys wrote a lot of them, right? Um, and so they found a lot of inspiration in their journey because following Jesus is an adventure. It, it, it takes an adventurous attitude. You have to be ready for what's coming or be willing to trust God in what's coming. Does that make sense? And I, another thing I've read, I've been reading and listening to some this week is the book The Hobbit. And the scariest thing in the whole book and the whole idea to Bilbo Baggins is the idea that he... Uh, may not come back home. That he might die. In the contract he's asked to sign, it says they'll make arrangements for his funeral. And that scares him, but he does it anyways because he's intrigued by the adventure, right? And, and we need to look at following Jesus that way. Intrigued by the adventure and excited about what might come even though we know that it might get real tough. So last week we looked at Elijah, and Elijah in 1 Kings 18 has a showdown with the prophets of Baal. Actually, God has a showdown with the prophets of Baal, right? You remember what happened? What happened in what we read last week? God wins. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple. He died. <laughs> and he sent down fire from heaven. And it consumed everything. And then what happened? Then they killed all the false prophets, right? Mm -hmm. Ahab's prophets, uh, prophets of Baal. And that's in verse, verse 40. And they slew them all. And we're going to pick up in 41. Catch what Elijah says to Ahab after they kill all these false prophets that Ahab had serving him and Jezebel. Now Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of the roar of a heavy shower. Remember what's been going on in the nation for a long time? Drought. Drought. Who told them it was going to, not going to rain? Elijah, right? And the whole deal, the whole showdown is not just who can send fire, but who's in control. God has caused it to not rain. And now he's, after, after God has shown who's in control, they killed the false prophets, now Elijah's saying, now it's going to rain. And he said, it won't rain except for all my word, and now he's saying it's going to rain. All right? But catch the rest of this. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he crouched down on the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and he looked and he said, There is nothing. And he said, Go back seven times. 
It came about at the seventh time that he said, Behold, a cloud as small as a man's hand is coming from the sea. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down so that the heavy shower does not stop you. In a little while, the sky grew black with clouds and the wind, and there was a heavy shower. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins and outran Ahab to Jezreel. So did you catch what happened? After the prophets of Baal were killed, Elijah says to Ahab, Go eat and drink. Because there's a sound of a heavy shower. Had Elijah heard a heavy shower? Not in a, where everybody else could hear it. But he acted on what God had told him, right? Now this is the adventure part. This is the scary part to me when I read this story. Elijah says, it's going to happen on my word. Ahab, you better go rest for a minute because it's fixing to rain. But there ain't no clouds. And nobody else can hear the shower. And in the next part of the story, it appears that, that Elijah himself is maybe going through some doubts. He goes and he puts his head between his knees in a, a prayer, submissive prayer position. And he keeps asking his servant, go look and see if you see clouds. Go look and see if you see clouds. See, he knows that God has said it's going to rain, but he's yet to see any clouds. And seven times, and I think that's pretty significant, the seventh time, the servant comes back and says, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand. Now, we live in Kansas and most of us watch the weather, watch the skies because we depend on weather determines what we do in a day sometimes. Guys, we see clouds a lot of times and don't get rain, right? We see a cloud that looks like it should dump something on us and it just goes right around us. And I imagine that they're no different. But what's Elijah do when the servant says, there's a cloud out there the size of a man's hand? Tell the servant to go tell Ahab to hurry up and get home because it's going to rain. Yeah, and the flood's going to stop you, right? The water's going to stop you. So it, there is Elijah, even though he can't see things, even though it's not obvious, he is still acting on what God's telling him. He's still willing to step out adventurously and say, God says that I believe it, Right? Plain and simple. Even though I can't see it, I can't feel it, I can't get my hands on it, I'm going to step up and I'm going to boldly proclaim it's going to happen because God says it. And following God and obeying God and trusting Him, it doesn't mean we have it all figured out doesn't mean we have it all together and we know all the answers. God, I think this applies to a lot of things. It applies to maybe theology. It applies to, to guiding our life. It applies to how to navigate things. But just because we're following and obeying Him doesn't mean we have it all figured out, but it does mean that we trust Him to have it all figured out. Right? And we trust Him even when we have struggles. It, it doesn't mean that we don't have struggles or that we don't have doubts. In fact, following God, obeying God means the opposite. It means that we do know we have struggles and we do know we don't have it all figured out, but we're trusting God to take care of those. We're trusting God to be in control because we know we're not. And in Mark chapter 9, you will turn over with me to Mark chapter 9. You 
beginning in verse 20, there's a story about a man whose son is demon-possessed. And I want you to listen to how this father wrestles with that doubt, don't have it all figured out, but still want to put faith in God. Listen to this. They brought the boy to him, beginning in verse 20, Mark 9, 20. They brought the boy to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening? And he said, from childhood, it has often thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the boy's father cried out and said, I do believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw, yeah, I'm going to stop right there. I do believe, but help my unbelief. See, I think that's where Elijah was when he told Ahab, it's going to rain. God, I believe you, but I'm struggling. Help my unbelief. And when he was on that mountain with his head between his knees, saying, go look. Go see if there's a cloud. That's what faith is. Saying, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I know you have a purpose. God, I know you're in control, but I struggle with it. Help me. Help me to trust. Help me to be okay with you doing things the way you see fit. Guys, there are things we're going to face in this world as believers that will make us wonder why? How? God, why, why is this going on? How are you letting this happen? But God's got a purpose and a reason. Remember, Elijah has not just been on a vacation and then showed up to this great showdown. Elijah's been hiding out in the brook, on the brook of the Kidron. Elijah's been being fed by ravens. Elijah's been living with a, a widow. But God didn't let her flower bowl run out, right? Or oil go dry. God has seen God, or Elijah's seen God do some amazing things in this. But Elijah's been having a hard time. He's been being hunted by the king of the country. And Obadiah had told him, you know, I've hit a hundred other prophets because Ahab's killed all the rest of you. Elijah's been going through some crazy stuff. But he keeps saying, God, I'll do what you say, even if I don't understand. God, I believe, but you're going to have to help me. And he saw God provide miraculously. And he saw God bring people back from the dead. And he saw God show him that he wasn't the only one in the fight. And he saw God send fire from heaven and show everybody who he was. And he still struggles and says, I want to see a cloud. I want to see it. Go look. Did God disappoint? Absolutely not. When we trust God to be who He says He is, He will always be that. And I want you to see that Elijah was listening to God's voice alone. Sometimes the doubts and struggles we have are because we've let other people tell us who God is rather than Him. And Elijah could have been listening to the narrative of the day. Where would that have put him? That would have put him on the wrong side, wouldn't it? They just killed 400 of those guys. But he was listening to God. And 
And that put Elijah where he needed to be. When we trust God in that way and listen to Him, we have to trust that His grace, His mercy, and His power is bigger than our struggle. God was bigger than the prophets of Baal. God was bigger than Ahab. God was bigger than the drought. And His grace came through. And then there's this little part on the end of this story in verse 46. Ahab's headed to Jezreel in a chariot, right? Not a donkey cart, not a skateboard, in a chariot. What does Elijah do? God puts him in a Zerel before Ahab. Yeah. He pops up and runs. <laughs> Under the power of God, he outruns the chariot. I'm really not sure why that's there. Except for to see that even in Elijah's struggle, God's power is still there. God is still in control. And, and we're going to look next week at 19 and look at, see kind of how it plays out when Ahab gets back to Jezebel. But guys, I want you to understand that we serve a mighty God that is bigger than us and there are going to be things we don't understand. And there are going to be times we just have to say, Lord, help me, Jesus. Don't understand, I don't, don't grasp all of it, but I know you're in control. And it's okay to say, God, I'm going to be looking for a cloud. But we still need to act. We still need to trust. We still need to, to uh, do our part in obedience and trusting Him. And there are lots of struggles in our nation today and lots of struggles in our personal lives and things that we're facing that, that aren't easy to face. And we may be having to say to God, I believe, but help my unbelief. But I want you to know today that God's power has not left. God's power is still there. It can still make you outrun a chariot when He needs to. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And I don't know where God's dealing with you. I'm going to ask you to do business with Him. You might take a minute and thank Him for the grace He has shown and the might He has shown. If nothing else, in the resurrection of... Well, not if nothing else. First of all, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and your salvation through that. <clears throat> and however else you need to, whatever else you need to thank Him for in that. And I'd encourage you that if you're struggling with problems, if you're struggling with doubt, that you would take this time and say, the Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So let's go, Lord, and pray.